Nick, obviously, and my project is a persistence of vision display. So here's a little bit of background. I knew I wanted to do something with the RGB LEDs, you know, because they're cool and you can change the colors. Then I saw a video on YouTube that made me figure out what I wanted to do. And before we get going, James, a persistence of vision refers to the optical illusion where multiple discrete images blend into a single image. Sort of like, you know how you take a book of sticky notes and you draw a little dot and move it, it sort of flips and old fashioned movies and that's how you get movies. And play the video. Play the video. Oh, I kind of right there. Pause, we need sound here. Pause? Yeah. Actually, we don't need sound, never mind. What they say to me. So, keep in mind that all the stuff they're doing down there, we don't need that. Crap. That's all complicated stuff. Can you point to the POV part in case we want to see it? Right there. Someone kill the lights. It's not the best video, but what they're doing is they're writing a letter and then they're sending it up there. And it's just spinning, it's spinning. Sort of see it. It's not moving the camera, you can see it better. You guys sort of seeing the letters? Yeah. 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 Is yours going to say BTC? Depends. And how much they're going to pay for the sponsorship. Okay. Okay, next slide. So, this is my awesome system schematic. It's in its early stages here. We've got some key elements here. You've got a motor, which is what you were going to use to spin the whole thing. You've got my board with my eight LEDs, which are going to be used to make the messages. You've got the board, which is the micro and whatever circuit board I make. And you've got a little bit of counterweight to you know, balance it out so it doesn't shake. And the important thing here are these two little, that's an LED, and that's a optical transistor, and that's gonna be used later. So, the thick, my project is broken into two parts, is the base and then there's the arm. The base is its own little self-contained circuit, and it includes a 12-volt motor, a white LED, resistor and a switch. It's real complicated. Nice and complicated. So we flip. That's the power supply. You flip the switch. It goes up there. Turns it on. We had a little bit of issues when we first did it because I decided to put the thing in. Oh, it's okay. So we decided to put the LED in series, which then caused not enough power to go to the motor. So we switched it and put it into parallel and it works fine. So then this is the arm. This little thing right there fits on the little motor shaft and a little hole, and screw it in. And the arm is gonna have the micro, the board, it's gonna have the LEDs, and it's gonna have a big battery because it has to be powered somewhere. Switch. So as of right now, this is my preliminary board schematic. We've got my nice little pins that'll plug into the micro. We've got a push button to start it. This is where we're going to connect the LEDs. This is a power step up chip. So we put 3.7 volts in. You can get up to 24 out if you wanted to, but we're going to need 12, not 5. This awesome square right here is a very important part of this project. That's where the charger is going to go, which I used to charge the battery. It's the most important part here. And then, of course, that's the clock. Because I'm not happy with just a normal little letter spinning around. I eventually want to make it a clock. So these are the three chips. We've got the DS1307 clock, which is a real-time clock, which could just plug in, but we're going to put it on a circuit board. And then you've got the charger chip. And you have to power step up chip. So 
because you saw there's some of these videos, if you look these up on YouTube, they get very skippy and they just spin in circles. And that's because they don't have a set start point. And we, I wanted a set start point, so I decided to use an LED from the base and a photo transistor to tell it when it goes past the set point. So that's how we can get it to stay a little bit solid and calibrate that. So this is a little model here. Obviously the base, the arm, it spins. And so every time that those two arrows line up, it'll send a signal, and that's when we can do stuff with it to make sure it's all going at the same time every time. So there are three things you want to know to make it a display. You need to know the time of one revolution, you need to know the number of divisions you want, and you need to know how you want to display each character. So these are some time measuring calculations I did. So if this path here represents the entire revolution of the arm, each little section is a division. So where big T stands for one revolution, little t, which is the time in between the revolutions, is big T divided by the number of slices. And so you can choose as many slices as you want. You choose 360. You'll be going every degree, which is a little too fast. We're going to stick somewhere around in the 10 degree range. And so when we want to send something, we only have eight LEDs. So this is sending it signal one, two, three, and four. Obviously, the red stand for on and the others don't. But to send the H, we have them all on. Then it sends this pattern, which is the two metal ones are on. Then this one, and that one. And when it rotates, we'll time it down so it looks like an actual H. So, each LED has to have three bits going to it. And since it's an eight LED board, that's 24 bits we have to send in each segment. And so this is how we store it. Nice little double array here, all the little symbols. Now each of these values you can use to individually control the colors of the LED and the brightness too. This is the awesome code to send a frame. So you just, you know, it cycles through the array, sends all the little loops, and puts it up there. And so this is the thing that's going to have to operate real fast, like 10 milliseconds or slower. Faster, not slower, faster. And that's going to have to happen every time it goes past one of those lines. To make a vision. Any questions? I'm done.